Tis the season. Do we think that's going to be enough? Yeah, I think so. All right, so it is fall. That means it is bird season. So Gage and I are going to take a run out to Dad's. He's super excited. There's two things Gage likes, cameras and guns. And when he sees either one in my hand, he goes crazy. So we're going to go out to Dad's. We'll get an update on the house. They are uh, supposedly progressing at this point. Uh, we were there two weeks ago and they had started putting up walls. So we'll stop in there, we'll take a look. And actually what I want to do is just hunt the woods right around Dad's house because it's kind of wet, lowlands, there's a good creek there, great for birds. And we'll, uh, we'll just do a bit of a fall hunt and chat. I know, buddy, I'm going, I'm going. Colors are starting, but we're way behind where we should be for this time of year. The whole plan today is just to get out and enjoy some fall nature, look for some color, look for some birds, get some exercise with Gage, and make a video for you guys. There's nothing more to it than that, just enjoying a nice fall day. Sometimes there's a little more color out here, out of town. I can see some oranges starting up there on the hillside. Hey, it's starting to look like a house. Well, be honest, there's not as much progress here as I had hoped for 10 days. I guess they got all the trusses up. I don't know how many guys are here working. There's nobody here today working. So, okay, we've got entrance way. And then I'm assuming this is going to be, I don't know, kitchen, living room right here. One or the other, probably kitchen on this side if it's the same as dad's last house. He'll put the living room on this side, and then he's got the bedrooms and the bathrooms. Not sure what... This must be a bathroom. One of these is bathroom. I don't know, I'm not sure. These are bedrooms here for sure. Yeah, okay. And then he's going to have... Yeah, I don't know, I guess maybe that's closet off of a bedroom, and then, I don't know, bathroom in the back corner here. I know there's a second bathroom. Well, there's what they've got for supplies here on site. Not a whole lot. Gage is going crazy because he can't climb ladders to get up here, so. <laughs> there will be a deck off the back here, I think, as well, same as the old house really surprised that nobody's here working today. And this is why my dad's getting frustrated, right? We're almost at the point of having frost on the ground. It's 10 o'clock, beautiful sunny day, and there's nobody here working on his house. I get why he's frustrated. Some of the best partridge hunting has occurred over the years right here on dad's driveway. <laughs> so there's a, there's a creek down here to the left, and this is all like spruce swamp. And um, it drops off down to the creek and the partridge just love his driveway. So we'll go out hunting in the fall, not see any birds and come home and there'll be two or three birds right here in the yard. So today we're going to take a walk through that side down to the creek and then we'll, we'll cross over all the way down to my grandfather's house, which is probably half a mile down the road, is that same kind of sprucey, mossy swamp, beautiful balsam woods for birds. So we're just going to stick in close to here and see what we can if we can shoot some of dad's pet partridge today. <laughs> All right, we'll just grab a handful of these. That's probably enough for a short walk around here. What do we got? I don't even know. Oh, number four, there we go, that's perfect. Nothing like the smell of fresh gun oil in the morning. Ah, oh, guys, 
Fall is my favorite time of year, just to get out here. I don't care if I see a bird or not, just to get out and enjoy the crisp air. Maybe some fall colors. There's a little bit happening out here. I can see some yellows, a touch of red here and there. But it's been a strange year, as I said in the truck on the way out here, guys. It's, uh, we're like a month behind. This is what we're looking at in here, guys. Perfect for partridge. Gage is going to stir up a couple for me here. Usually with the dog, they'll just fly right up into a tree. And now he's down in the creek. I can hear him. You found the water, did you? Also to note, guys, don't get fooled this time of year, okay? Even though I'm hunting an area that I know very well, and I'm not planning on going that far, I've still got a GPS in my pack sack with two extra set of batteries in there, just in case you never know, you get on the trail or something, or you get distracted, especially this time of year because there's so many leaves still on, it's easy to get turned around. So even though I know where I am, I've been here since I was a kid in these woods, I'm still prepared. Come on, go get him. Go get him. Pretty good deer trail right here. So, believe it or not, Gage is fully trained. I can make him circle, I can make him retrieve, make him heal most of the time, eh buddy? We don't practice it a lot. And he pretty much runs on his own now. He knows the routine when we're hunting. When I've got a gun, he knows. I want small 25 yard circles. He'll loop and he comes back every time. But you'll see him, he'll go check all these little bushes and under the trees and stuff. Good boy. Find him. So being out here in the woods at my favorite time of year, guys, on a beautiful morning like this, you have to think a little bit about spirituality. You know, the whole grand scheme of things. You guys know we do other series on the channel where we talk about transcending and just really thinking about why you're here what is the purpose of this life you know and it's not to do the nine to five for 45 years like many people believe we've talked about that and i want to tell you guys two stories okay that have well two things that have been brought to my attention just in the last two weeks as a reminder that i also believe that we are in charge of what we experience down here and I don't just mean at our physical level, I mean at a deeper, higher level that we can't understand or process. Oh, hell yeah, there's ravens even out here. <laughs> okay, guys, Dad and I were in the boat. And Dad says to me, hey, look, there's a lure over there floating on the water. And I said, no, it's not, it's a leaf. And there was lots of poplar leaves on the water. Okay, we were up at camp last week. And uh, so he started into his tirade of, oh, you know, I've seen that many times. We've gotten lures up here. And I don't know why that is. Is it the wave action? And he's going on. And I'm thinking in my head, Dad, it's only ever happened three times in 20 years that we found a lure up here. And I'm thinking, okay, just let the old guy rattle on. But we know there's nothing to it, really. It's, you know, this is what I'm saying to myself. And he's going on and he says, uh, well, I wonder why that is. Why does a lure stay down there all this time? And I said, well, it's because the, the hooks rot off of them. The hooks are made out of different material for a reason. Over time, they rust and corrode away. And Dad says, oh, I don't think so. So between us, we're kind of having this, not argument, but we're disagreeing on everything about this situation. And literally, four minutes later, we go to turn the boat around. I look over Dad's shoulder, and out there, shining on the river, I see a purpley-pink reflection. Right away, I said, look, Dad, there's the lure. 
And we went and we grabbed it. And it was like an eye opener to me, like somebody was saying, hey, you're both right. He's right, it does happen. There are lures here floating on the river because it's only happened two or three times, guys, um, that I've been up there and seen it. And for that to happen, literally within five minutes of us talking about it, and then we pull it out of the water, we're looking at it. And I said, I showed dad, I said, look, this one hook is broken off and there was two others about to break off because it had been in the water so long. And I put new hooks on it and I got a new lure out of it. But it was just one of those things that wasn't a coincidence. I mean, this has happened three times to me in 20 years up there. And then we're talking about it and five minutes later it happens. Okay. Somehow one of us made that happen. I have no doubt in my mind. And the second instance is dad was very stressed out about wrecking his car. I don't know what it's like down in the States, guys. Up here in Canada, you can't get cars. You can't get used cars. The used market... You're paying $10,000 for a car that two years ago was worth $3,500. It's crazy. Um, you go to order a new car and you're waiting months. They can't get chips for these things. So you're running without computers, without heated seats. You know, I've got multiple friends that have bought new trucks. Didn't have heated seats all last winter because they couldn't get chips for them. Okay, so dad's looking for a new car. And he's very specific. I want another Nissan because that's what he wrecked. And he loved his Nissan. And I don't blame him, guys. I'm a Subaru guy, first and foremost. We've owned four of them and never had an issue in 20 years of driving Subarus. Yeah, I drive a Dodge Ram right now because I needed a truck. But my wife drives a Mitsubishi, and it's almost six years old. We've never had a problem with it, right? Hate to say it, but in some instances, you got to go foreign because their vehicles just are better made. Anyway, Dad can't find a car anyway. He is stressed to the limits, like the stress as I've ever seen him between the house and between the car. And he's looking for a week. We went to a bunch of different dealerships. He's tried ordering. He's like, how long do I have to wait for this, this, this? You know, months. And he can't find anything used. And then all of a sudden, he shows up at my door after about a week of looking. He says, I found the car. And uh, he actually went down to the Chev dealer which my buddy is the service manager at. I take the Dodge there to get it worked on. He said, I don't know why I went there looking for a Nissan. They had one used Nissan Altima on the lot. And 22,000 kilometers, a 2019, all-wheel drive, fully loaded, more treats and whistles on there than Dad has ever owned in any other vehicle. He bought it on the spot. He's like, yep, that was it. That was the one meant for me. And we both just kind of knew it. Like, again, I think... He has created this in his own reality here, that car, because you can't find a car anywhere. And for him to find exactly what he was looking for at the price he wanted, my dad's pretty cheap. <laughs> um, you know, we pulled this thing up on Auto Trader before we went back down and bought it. And it said right there, very good price, well below average. And for that to happen in this day and age, yes, it was a little bit more than some of the stuff that's out there. I mean, it and and less kilometers and all that. So you had to have money to get this car. I get that part, but it was too strange, guys. It was another one of those things that was just not a coincidence. I believe that. Well, there's a little bit of color up there. As we climb the hill behind Dad's, we'll see more color. It's going to go up about three, 400 feet in elevation, so... Well, I think we're going to swing around back down to the bottom of the hill towards my grandfather's old house. It's a little more sprucey in there. I don't know. I'm beginning to wonder if we're going to see anything today. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This is the spot. I've been chasing birds in here since I was eight years old with a pellet gun. They're always in here. Not seeing anything today, though. A lot of white spruce in here too. You guys were commenting when we flew the drone over here, how come there's so many dead trees? Well, they're not dead. They're covered in that moss. And from the drone's point of view, way up there, they do look dead, but they're not.
How come when I was a kid, it was never this hard going? It's just getting thicker and thicker and thicker as the years go by. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm getting thicker and thicker and thicker, I don't know. Gary isn't the ute he used to be. Whew. Oh, wow. Thank God, there's the road. That is so thick in there. There were places in there that even Gage stopped in front of me and he waited for me <laughs> to move the brush and stomp the sticks out of the way for him. Oh my God. Let me check the GPS. I bet you that was two miles. Uh, two mile loop I just did for sure, I would bet. 2.3 miles, guys, and I didn't see a single bird. We'll let Gage get a drink here in the creek before we go. Come on. Down there. Lots of trout in this little creek here. This is the one that runs right beside Dad's house. When I was a kid, they had a single little tiny culvert right in the middle, but uh, it washed the road out. So now they've gotten smart. They put in two big separate plastic ones. Well, Dad just pulled up. Is this house as long as your old house? 10 feet longer. 10, 10 feet, feet longer. longer. Okay. And two feet wider. Oh, that's all right. Because they didn't go up. Uh, no second story, but. No, well, that's okay. Big basement. Look down there. Oh my. Yeah, God. I was looking. It's yeah. You got lots of room for junk down there. Well, yeah. Don't don't need all that till I. So what is it? So right here is living room and kitchen. I'm this assuming. This is living room over here. Yeah. I'm gonna. I was gonna put. We're gonna put a railing here, but I think you're gonna put a full wall because those couches I bought even have plug-ins on them for stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'll put one there. And one there, TV thing up there. The and that's kitchen on this side? Kitchen on that side. And okay. what is that opening right there off the kitchen? There's a little short room. Oh, that's a pantry they gave me. Okay, I was wondering what that was. My Bathrooms bedroom. in the back corner on the right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then a laundry room down there, two bedrooms on this side. It's going to be nice. Yeah. If they ever get her done. Oh, well, well <laughs> no, Mackenzie's good. Yeah. He says they're going to send him to get his red seal. He's worked for different companies before, the young lad. Worked for his uncle and all them. Good. Then the guy came back and told me because I said, hey, my picture window, I said I had screw out. Uh, yeah. Well, they weren't going to give me that. Then he came back and said, well, did you want the ones that have that? Because I guess there's no difference in the money. So I said, well, yeah, that's a nicer window when you got that thing to screw out the whole, and you just crank out Makes the Makes it easy side. to clean yeah. them. Yeah. And a six foot Renaissance two plus two patio door going out the back. The patio decks, the whole package is out there to build the, build the deck on. Okay, I saw the stuff they had stacked over on the side. I wasn't sure what it was for. How big's the deck? I think it's eight by 20. It's bigger than what I had. You got a big deck. Yeah. Never had any complaints about your deck before? Me, no. <laughs> My deck was good. All right, well, I guess we're not going to go over and walk the other property today, guys. I got chatting with Dad and the builder here, so spent an hour talking with them. Ran out of time. We'll have to uh, go try the other property another day. So no luck on our first outing, but hey, at least we got out, right? <laughs>